Welcome to Encounters. Today we're going to be studying about provision. Have you ever had a need in your life? Has your cabinets ever been bare? Or you, know, you didn't have the money to meet this bill or that bill? Well, today we're going to be talking about provision in God's Word. Throughout God's Word, we have the remedy, the answer, the prescription to life's problems. Amen, ladies. Amen. Amen. And joining me again today is Lois Collier and Belinda D'Angelo. Thank you, ladies. It's such an honor to have you once again. I'm, I'm just, I'm excited. I get overwhelmed sometimes with the way that God connects people together, don't you? Yes. yes. Amen. So today we're going to be in our, begin our scripture in uh, 1 Kings, uh, the 17th chapter. And I'm going to start at the ninth verse. This is talking about... Um, uh, the widow woman and Elijah. So in the verse 9, let's read. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now, isn't this awesome how God had already lined up things? Right. He already set things into motion. He hadn't even got, got there, but the widow woman was already there in place. And Elijah was way over here, and he tells him where to go, where there's going to be someone that was going to sustain him and provide a meal for him. Isn't that awesome, lady? That is awesome. Yes. Hey, Amen. Yes. Have, have you ever had that happen in your life? That God, uh, you know, God provided something. You just didn't know where it was going to come from. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Many I, times. Oh, I, I've right. been there and done that. And sometimes, you know, um, I've come to the point where, you know, I almost give up. But just, well, what we call the last minute was just in time for the exactly. Lord. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we think on uh, fleshly scale, uh, you know, carnality scale. But what is his way? Uh, he says, his ways are higher what, than our ways. His thoughts are higher right. than our thoughts. His time is not on our time clock. You know, sometimes we see people going like this, you know, you know, in church even, you know. Right. Uh, you know, I've got to be somewhere. But, you know, I set aside the Sabbath. You know, I make, I make no plans to be nowhere on that day because uh, I don't want that bombarded in my mind and my thinking. Right. So that, you know, it's a, it, a separate, it stops me and it distracts me from worshiping the way I need to worship. Amen? What do you yes. think about provision? Well, I know God's always provided for me. And there have been times, and not just financially, but, you know, maybe even in sickness. Mm -hmm. You just want to, because when you're really sick, it's so hard to fight oh, yes. sometimes. And you just want to give up. And, yes. and then it's almost like miraculously, you feel better. And you're like, and, and it, and it kind of goes back to, what we had stuttered, mm -hmm. studied previously is the word. Right. You know, that's what encourages me that he is going to be, it is going to be right. okay. Well, we see all these things happen in the word of God, what he does. And then you go to the New Testament, Hebrews 13 and 8, and he says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. forever. So if he done it then, guess what? He's going to do it now. Right. Amen. Right. It's okay. never changing. Never changing. And, you know, just this week, uh, God provided for me because up until yesterday I had no voice. Right. Yeah, you know, and I had I had some uh, uh, a lady in particular praying for me. I said, "Honey, you're going to, have to pray for me. You're going because I don't know what I'm going to do. We're going to we're going to have you know record these programs, and uh, and she said it's already done. It's already done. Just don't even worry about it. So I didn't think about it no more. Woke up this morning, tried my voice. Here it is. Praise yes. God. Praise God. Now, you know, God. That's the kind of God we serve. Right. Yes. He steps in when we need it. And I believe uh, while my voice was gone, it was a resting period as far as, you know, speaking and things like that. But still, that didn't stop me from getting to the Word of God because right. the Word of God, I believe it was that ointment, that salve that brought healing. That brought healing. Amen. Right. Send His Word to heal you. Yes. <laughs> Amen. There again, the Word. Right. Yep. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering for me and my son, that we may eat and die. She had already decided this 
decided this was going to be their last supper, so to speak. This <laughs> yeah. was going to be their last meal. But I love how she, she truly responds right. in the next scriptures. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. And I, I'm sure she was thinking, well, you don't understand. Now, Elijah, you just don't understand. Yes. Right. When I do this for you, there is not going to be any left for me and my son. Right, yeah. But uh, God was about to amaze her. God yeah. was about to prove to her that he, he does provide, and he will give us provision. Amen? Amen. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal sh shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Now, just imagine, we've all heard this preached, Every day she'd go to it, scrape. It was just enough. Right. She'd go and scrape it. And my husband preached a message one time. I can just imagine her hearing the scraping of the bone. And every time she's thinking, well, this is good. This is the last meal. But she'd go back to it the next, the next yes. day and the next day, or however many days it took. It all comes back to the Word. All, this stuff, all these things are lining up to, together because he spoke the Word into existence. He spoke to her what to do and what to say. And, uh, and she was obedient. That's what I love. That's what I was going to say. She had to be obedient. Right. She didn't argue with him. This is not going to work. Right, you right. don't understand. You didn't hear me. Uh -huh. She did. And, and, and really, it's another lesson about first fruits here uh -huh. as right. well. She gave the best to the man of God. Yes. She didn't give Just, him a crumb, mm -hmm. she, or, but she gave him the best mm -hmm. and the first. And that's why God granted that, because she was obedient. Right, right. And you know, what does the Word of God say? Obedience is better than sacrifice. sacrifice. Yes. And, and you know, I read that all the time. And when I first read that, I thought, well, Lord, doesn't the two go hand in hand together? When you, when you obey on some things, aren't you really sacrificing? But, you know, it's just, I was young then. Right. And that's where I had to get in a word study and, and, and uh, study things out. That's how you really find out what Scripture means. Like you said before, getting the Strong's Concordance or something out. I, I'm one to, I'm, when I read a scripture, I like to take each and every word, I'll write it down, and I'll go look it up over here, and I'll look it up over here, and it, uh, you know, get the definition, the meaning of it, and it opens it up to me more. It takes a little effort on our part yes. to understand the Word of God. And like you say, before you get ready to stu study, you ask God to reveal to you through the Holy Spirit, you know, the revelation of His Word and what yes. it means. Right. And, and Elijah represented the Word of God, and mm -hmm. she recognized him as the prophet of God mm -hmm. and believed the Word, you know. So uh, I really believe that just goes back to our, our last study about the Word of God. Yes, yes. You know. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's, it, it's tremendous to, to see the prophets how they worked. And, and, you know, we've read the story of Elijah where, you know, he ran off afraid of Jezebel. Right. But God, you know, I believe every man and woman of God go through, the, through their uh, different trials. I believe they grow weary and uh, they just want to sometimes throw up their hands and quit. But that's when God steps in yeah. and says, rest in me, rest right. in me. And we do have to step back. Uh, you know, it's okay to say no. Yes, it is. That was a hard lesson for me to learn. <laughs> it's okay to say no sometimes. And uh, I, I'm not talking about God, but I'm talking, you know, you know people right, that want, right. you know, demands different things from you. And, uh, and want you to, you know, be able to minister here and minister there. Yes, we're called to minister. We got to use a little wisdom, though, when right. to get filled back up. Right. And, and Even Jesus departed oh, yes. right. and went alone mm -hmm. and, and talked to the Father. Mm -hmm. And... And we have, I mean, if he did it, we have to do it. That's right. We're, we're human. We're just human. That's why it says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Right. We're yes. earthen vessels. We're Amen. just human. We're weak. Without the Spirit of God, we can't do anything. If we try to do it on our own strength, we're going to fall flat on our faith. Well, and that's know, why it says that obedience is better than mm -hmm. sacrifice. You can sacrifice in your flesh and have nothing to do with God. Yes. You know, or, 
or, or you know, other reasons to, to do the sacrifice. Amen. But, but when you're obe being obedient to God's word and it becomes a sacrifice, that's when it becomes well pleasing to God. Yes. That savor, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that, that goes up to God. It's a well pleasing sacrifice. Mm -hmm. My mother used to tell me that, uh, that, uh, you'll learn that when you feel like you're burning out, uh, you know, from working in, for the kingdom, uh, when you're feeling that way, when you're feeling so tired, and we're, that's when you're operating on your own self and not operating right. through the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So you've got to uh, learn to uh, differentiate the, the difference when the Holy, Holy Spirit is leading and when it's something you want to do. Yes. Uh, sometimes we can be ministering, we can be preaching, and we can preach outside the anointing. Absolutely. We don't yeah. cut it off. And God says, C cut it off. And yeah. then you can see it on the faces of the congregation because, right. yeah. you know, you just lose them. Right. You can feel it in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. it's, you know, it's even though we've got all, may have all these other thoughts going on here, you know, it wasn't meant for us to say. Um, right. You know, the Lord spoke what he wanted to speak. That's what the people needed to hear. And we need to leave it at that because we can, uh, in a matter of fact, it's, we, it's just like pouring cold water over a fire because someone could be out there in the congregation being set free and delivered for what God spoke through you, but then you continue to go on right. within yourself. And it becomes and, a hindrance. And it becomes a hindrance. Right. Amen. Yeah. Praise God that, you right. know, uh, that through time in His Word and meditation in His Word and seeking the face of God, we learn when to not do those things. And I'm sure we've all been there. That's it, what yeah. I was going to say. We, we've all been there. We've all messed up. We've all had to learn from from our mistakes, mm -hmm. yes, you know, um, and and we had to learn what it was when the Lord is pulling back the reins, right. so to speak, right. so that we would stop instead of, you know. When I was younger in the ministry, you know, I didn't recognize those reins being pulled back. Right. Yeah. And I would speak beyond what the Holy Spirit said. But, uh, but as I've grown, you know, I've learned. So it's, it's good to listen. I would love to one day have... A lot of older people in ministry, it's been in ministry for years. I would just love for them to, one by one to come to me and tell me their stories and you know, their right. experiences. Wouldn't that be awesome to learn? We need right. to glean from that. Right. We need to glean from, from their experiences. Our experience will be different, Right. Uh, but uh, we can learn from their experiences. Amen. Well, you know, and I was thinking this a while ago that... Um, <clears throat> when we listen to somebody else's testimony, how encouraging that mm -hmm. is, you know, mm -hmm. for us to, to keep going whenever you said, you know, sometimes we just want to give up. When we hear other people's testimonies, it, it really encourages us to keep going because we recognize these people as men and women of God. And, yes. You know, and yeah. how they've overcome and how they've triumphed right. and um, how, the, how the Lord brought them through. Amen. You know, in these days, I feel like I am the older woman. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but I feel like, Oftentimes I feel like that, you know, the reason that I went through a lot of the things that I did in my life was bad choices on my part, mm -hmm. of course. But the way that God brought me through those things, you know, it, that's how you minister to those younger mm -hmm. ones. And the Bible tells us that the older women are to train up the younger it's women. Yes. You know, and I, I, when I was teaching kids, I just, you know, I had fifth grade girls and I'd say, you know, you're the older woman to your five-year-old sister. Mm -hmm. Be that example. And, and it goes on if you're 105. Right. You're the example. And uh, I want to be that good example. Right. And you have to have, you can't say I overcame by pitching a fit, you right. know, or <laughs> yeah. getting mad and losing your yeah. temper. It's in wisdom yes. of God's word that we're able to, uh, and, you know, you can have knowledge, but you have to have understanding. Yes. And that's what takes us through those hard times. And again, that's how you respond. Right. Yes, How do exactly. you respond to it? Um, I love what you said that uh, the older sister or brother or whatever is uh, the, you know, the older person to the younger one. I, I love that because many people, when they, when they read that or they hear that, you know, they just think, you know, um, old, older person or whatever. Yeah. That doesn't apply to me. But um, I believe sometimes that we go through experiences to see how we're going to respond. Right. Um, I've been there, and years ago, you know, I would say something, mm -hmm. and uh, but I've learned to hold back, and I've learned to sit and watch, as I said right. before, um, and see what's coming from the heart. 
and you will recognize if you're in doubt about someone, all you have to do is just sit and listen. If it's the same thing uh, being said over and over and over, you know what's in their heart. Yes. So my goal, uh, my desire is to have nothing but the word coming from my heart, yes. nothing but encouragement and edification coming from my heart, but also truth. Right. coming from my heart. Yes. I mean, because we must minister in spirit and, and in truth. truth. Amen. Yes. And speak the truth and, in love. And speak the truth <laughs> in, in love. love. I think I said that at the retreat uh, yeah. about the, my mother used to tell me a story about the iron hand in a velvet glove. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that. That's how uh, God had showed her to, uh, it was a story she was told when she was little, but she said that's how I made my motto from that, uh, that uh, I had to rule with the iron hand but the velvet glove softened the blow. Right. Amen. I think that's what turns people off a lot of times mm -hmm. because people try to minister out of condemnation. Mm -hmm. Right. And they may be speaking the truth right out of the word, yeah. but it comes across as mean and convicting, mm -hmm. and okay. that's not how right. God is. Well, Lois, even though the word uh, may say to do something, um, if I'm convicted of something, that doesn't mean I go pound somebody else for the very same thing. Right. God has to do the convicting. Yes. Uh, you know, we have to love someone, like I said earlier, about uh, living our life before them. And uh, it, it does no good to uh, just put someone under your thumb. Mm -hmm. But all we have to do is speak the word right. and let the word do the work. Amen? Amen. And, and don't go beyond that. Praise God. I remember... Uh, I'll share the story. I don't think I've shared it on any of the programs. When we're talking about provision, this was early on. Uh, oh, goodness, I'm not going to tell you how many years. <laughs> but uh, my husband and I, we were, we were attending a church in Smithville, Tennessee. We had moved up there uh, to help take care of my parents. And uh, we had this old beat-up green Chevrolet. On the passenger side, there was a hole in the floorboard. That's what we drove. And, you know, I told him I felt like, you know, the Flintstones almost. <laughs> <laughs> like I put my feet out and, you know, go like this. But you, you could feel the heat, literally feel the heat from the road in the summertime. And evidently it must have smoked bad, too, because um, uh, I'll tell you at one point what the uh, pastor said. One day I had gone to the bank and I thought, you know, I was driving by. And I normally don't look at cars, at car lots, and I was just driving by. And I just glanced over, and my, a car caught my eye. It wasn't nothing spectacular. It was a little small car. And I just heard the Lord say, go to the bank. I got it set up. Well, I go to the bank. I was so nervous because I'd never been to a bank before to get a loan or anything like that. So I'm sitting down talking to the loan officer and everything. He's looking over. He said, he said well, I just don't think we can. And his phone rung. So I hopped up, excused myself, went to the bathroom, got down uh, right there in the bathroom. I said, Lord, you sent me here for a reason. Now I'm, I'm claiming hold of this. You said you provide. So I got, I said, I'm trusting in you. So I got up, go back in there. And he was off the phone. And I sat back down. He goes, well, I've rethought this. You've got the loan. Oh, praise That's God. how God yeah. provided. Right. Praise God. Just yeah. that quick. See, I believe it was a test of how, how I was going to respond. See, right. I could have thrown up my hands and pride. I knew it. I knew he wasn't going to do it. Isn't that the way the enemy speaks to us sometimes? That's true. That's true. Uh, did, did you actually think that Jesus was going to help you? I mean, he, he said that to me before. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's a liar. He's the father of all lies. That's who, it. Are who are you? Yeah, yeah. You right. think that, yeah. You know, I have a car story too. My car was old and I was just like praying. I said, Lord, you know that I can't afford a car and I'm going to have to have a car and I don't know. Mm -hmm. You're just going to have to make a way. It was at no time after that. Somebody hit my car and totaled it. Oh, wow. And, oh, <clears throat> that anger rose up mm -hmm. in me and, and, you know, this person didn't have insurance and I was not a happy girl. <laughs> You're not a happy camper. <laughs> and then. My insurance paid me so much more wow. than I thought they mm. would. And then when I went car shopping, I was looking at old cars. And then the lady said, how much money do you have to pay down? And I told her. And she said, oh, honey, I can get you in a brand new car. The payment was $8 difference in an old car and a My new goodness. car. Praise God. And it was something I could afford because right. I got more money. And nobody got hurt right. in the accident. But at the moment that it happened, uh -huh. I was so angry. <laughs> and, and no, I wasn't hurt or anything, but 
God provided that. Yeah. And, and, you know, after a few days of realizing that was his way, mm -hmm. because I probably would have not gone to the car sh dealership because I couldn't right. afford a new car. Well, you know, I, 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 matter of fact, I've said this recently, uh, don't be so upset when something happens that's, uh, that wasn't in your plan, something like that happens because it could be God's way of positioning things for you to receive a blessing okay. from Him. And uh, too many times, it's, again, it's the response. Uh, I feel in my case, he, he was, you know, checking my response. You know, if, if I had responded differently, I don't think I would have got it. I really right. don't. But uh, God is so good that way. He, um, he blesses His children. He wants to bless His children. And there's nothing wrong with being prosperous. There's nothing wrong with being blessed by God. That's right. We are children of the Most High God. That's it. He wants to bless us. That's Amen. That's right. That's right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Right. Let's turn to, uh, Lois, turn to um, John, the sixth chapter. And, begin, and you can read. Well, just to set this up, this was the story of the 5,000 mm -hmm. that needed to be fed, mm -hmm. spiritual food, and uh, the disciples don't know what to do. And so in verse 9, it says, uh, this is someone answering Jesus, there is a lad here with, who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are we among so many? And Jesus just told him to make the people mm -hmm. sit down, and now there was grass, and they sat down, and to go on down, and then in verse 13, therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. He was giving them spirit, physical mm -hmm. food, and it said yeah. there were 12 baskets. Wow. And I've often wondered what size the basket might have been. Mm -hmm. You know, was it a little basket or was <laughs> it a big basket? But he showed not just the disciples, but everybody there that he was the provider. Right. right. But then when you go over, he uses that to bring you into a spiritual lesson yes. of heavenly bread. Yes. You know, and, and Jesus said, most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you mm -hmm. the true bread from heaven, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Yes. And then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread. And he said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Mm -hmm. So he used a physical provision and then he showed them a spiritual provision. Praise God. Praise God. In, in, in what I uh, remember in, uh, in the bread and the fish, they had an abundance left over. Right. That's our God. That's the yes, way God does. He just, uh, you know, I, can you imagine him going home to his mom, you know, and, and, t and telling the story? And she was probably thinking, now, son, now, don't exaggerate. Don't we do that evangelistically? Right. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, we do that sometimes. It's, it's kind of like the the fisherman story. I caught one this big, one really out, just yeah. like that. But uh, the God we serve, this can become this. Absolutely. Yes. Both right. physically and spiritually. Amen. The bread of life. Yes. He, it is uh, life giving word. It was also, if I may. Um, a lesson to his disciples too, because when this event happened again, and it was the feeding of the 4,000, and they were like, well, what are we gonna do? We need to send them home. And he goes, no, you feed them you, wow. that time. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, he, he did it again. He multiplied everything, but he was trying to teach his disciples mm -hmm. you know, that you have me, but the greater works you will do as Amen. well. Amen, yeah. and that we can do those things. Right. Now, when we speak in authority and uh, place those words out into the supernatural. Y'all right. hear me say all the time to uh, reach down and reach up into the supernatural realm and pull it into this natural realm. Right. Uh, we have the authority to do that. We do. Yes. Whatsoever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever is loosed in earth is loosed in heaven. So I know there's no crying. I know there's no sickness. I know there's no death in heaven. So guess what? We can speak those things. Well, I'm getting excited. Uh, um, we can speak those things here on Right. Earth. Amen. Right. And it goes back yes. to what Margaret was telling you too about yes. expanding your territory. Yes. You know, we need Amen. to change Amen. our mindset that we can do these things, you know, because of the Word of God and the Word dwells on the inside of us. It never fails us. It never fails us. It never fails. There's so many instances in, in the Word of God where, where He provides. There's so many things that uh, 
Well, for instance, I'm going to use uh, the, the scripture of, um, I won't go to it, but the woman with the issue of blood. She had already tried everything else. But she heard about this man called Jesus. And she wasn't supposed to be out in public. Right. But she did what she had to. She pressed through the crowd. She knew she should just touch the hem of his garment. She reached for the prize. She reached for the <laughs> prize. Amen. We've got to learn to reach for the prize. That's right. Yes. Not to be afraid. And don't think, uh, don't think, um, I think sometimes we downplay uh, our self-worth. God sees us uh, so much bigger. And, yes. and we think, who am I that God would bless me? Who am I that God would heal me? Who am I that God would open my blinded eyes? Who am I that God would open my ears? You know, I haven't served him up to this point. But the Word of God says that when we cry out to Him and um, when we ask Him into our heart and He forgives us, you know, we have the same opportunity as anyone else that's been serving God 50, 60 mm -hmm. years. We're entitled to the same blessings as anyone else. Right, that's right. That's I, I, I love because God plays it. He plays it on a leveling field. I mean, He plays it, you know, we're all on the same playing field, so to speak. Right. And that what he'll do for this one, he'll do for this one, he'll do for this that's one. Right. Amen. Right. And that's what excites me because she did. She just reached out and touched the hem of his garments and he turned. Who right. touched me? Right. That's why I think that the parables and the stories in the scripture are mm -hmm. common everyday mm -hmm. people. Amen. And my right. mind always goes back to the woman at the well. We don't even Amen. know what her name was. Right. No. But she was worthy to be mentioned Amen. because right. God used Amen. her to bring the gospel. Yes, always. He'll use someone to bring across your path that you wouldn't even imagine sometimes. Uh, he used someone to, uh, come, uh, to bring someone across my path at a low point in my time that in my mind's eye, I would have thought they would never know any of the word. But they came to me and spoke a word and brought healing. Amen. So today, if you need a healing, if you need provision, whatever your provision needs, Cry out to God. Get into the Word of God. Speak the Word. The Word says in Romans 4 and 17 to call those things that be not as though they were. And when you do that, you will be blessed. You will be provided for. So until next time, I want you to continue to walk in love, and I want you to keep your faith. See you soon. Encounters is sponsored by Vessels of Honor Worldwide, AAA Enterprises, and the viewers. If you would like to contact Encounters, email encounterswithgod at comcast.net or write to us at 117 Sunset Place, Portland, Tennessee, 37148.